everybody, welcome back to Voyages of Shelf Discovery. We're all at blogbook.com here, and let's do a little bit of shuttle diplomacy. These are some of my oldest friends on display in this room. Because this is my space shuttle fleet from way back in the day. In at least a couple of cases, from before the shuttle had actually flown. And I suppose I should explain that just a little bit. And actually, I should point out that the the shuttles on display there are actually part of a much larger space wall that I have going on. Or, you know, or at least one of the racks is just focused on toy versions of real spacecraft. And there's kind of a concentration of space shuttles there because... That was the thing in my childhood. I was technically born while we were still going to the moon. But, you know, not that I would have known because I was still... I don't think I was even crawling yet, I'll put it that way. Yeah, I was very, very young when the last moonshot was flown and then of course other than the the odd Skylab flight or Apollo Soyuz all concentration you know all all effort was being concentrated on the shuttle program as far as NASA was concerned it there were not going to be more Apollo flights other than the ones that they had already built spacecraft for originally for, you know, for their lunar missions, but those were gradually canceled, especially since, you know, really the goal was met in 1969 from a political perspective. The goal had been met in 1969. You know, okay, we beat Russia to the moon. And... So you kind of had this friction between we've met this political goal and, oh, now we can start doing actual science. Goody. It, there was a lot of friction between those two things and, you know, never the twain shall meet. So even before the shuttle was flown, the marketing blitz as far as NASA was concerned, was on. It, they were out to sell the public on the shuttle. And, and the funny thing is, the you remember that all the shuttle mission numbers were prefaced with STS, Space Transportation System. Well, the shuttle was never meant to be the entire space transportation system, at least not on paper. It was supposed to be kind of the cornerstone of it, the truck that got you to orbit. And then there were supposed to be other things like orbital tugs and a space station. You know, the space station took a very long time to happen and it wound up being this joint international venture, which it still is, and which I fear there will be, there will never be anything else like it in human history at this rate, the way things are going. So... <sighs> A lot was riding on the shuttle. That was where all of the effort was from an engineering perspective as well as from a PR perspective. And so there were toys galore. Uh, it, it was a the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. Great, glorious time to get toy space shuttles. And... This was my fleet, and here's the funny thing. Each one of them represents a different shuttle in the actual fleet, and I can remember which one is which. So before we go off in that direction, <laughs> because it's kind of fun, let's point out that there were numerous companies making the shuttle because... Basically, the exterior design was, it was patented by the government. And so, 
no one had to pay for it. It wasn't this licensed thing. Anyone could make a toy space shuttle. And this is something that you'll notice as we start going through the fleet that's on the shelf there. A lot of them had Space Lab as the default payload. Because in a lot of PR illustrations, that was the payload that was on display. So that being said, let's, uh, let's start going down the list. This one, with the tail cone on permanently, is the Enterprise. And this was part of a, a, a kind of a set of two vehicles. This came with a 747 shuttle carrier aircraft. Uh, and, and by the way, these are all you know, solid die-cast metal. The, these dudes are... They're about Hot Wheels sized. Not Hot Wheels scale, but Hot Wheels sized. And they're pretty solid. I, you know, you don't want to drop them on your toes. Especially, you know, if you're an itty-bitty person and you got little toes. So, since this one had the, the tail cone on it, and since the Enterprise had made her first approach and landing test flights in 77 with the tail cone on, which, uh, by the way, you can see that up at the top of the screen, that little screen at the top, there's actual footage from the approach and landing test. So, that one's the Enterprise. Now, I got the Enterprise uh, quite a bit after some of the others. So, it is not quite as, uh, shall we say, well-flown as the rest of the fleet. Uh, for that, you start with Columbia here, which this was made by Corgi, which was a UK toy maker that also had you know, part of its apparatus in the US. It was distributed to the US. It had cargo bay doors that could open and close it used to have more decals than this. In fact, you could see that the uh, the American flag there is actually... That is a very old piece of scotch tape on there holding that American flag on because the decals um, are very old and very frail. You can open and close the cargo bay doors on this. You cannot take out Space Lab. Why would you want to take out Space Lab? Because it's connected by airlock to the to the shuttle mid-deck. Well, you know, you wouldn't want to do that. So there's Columbia. That was the first one I got. And my my little Columbia there, actually, I, I was flying it before the actual Columbia flew. I'll put it that way. This one is... This one was Challenger. This was the second one I got. I forget, actually, who made this one. It had little rollers on the bottom, little wheels, so it could land. The wheels did not retract. The The Corgi shuttle, like the one that I decided was Columbia when I was a kid, uh, that one had a little switch that you could open and close the landing gear with. Uh, Challenger here, landing gear was always out. This one, again, you could open and close the cargo bay doors, and again, the payload was Space Lab. So that brings us to the most flown and the most beat up of my fleet. This one is Atlantis. And uh, this was made by a toy and model maker called Ertl, E-R-T-L. And it was very solid it, to the point that its cargo bay doors do not open. Um... Ertl was also the manufacturer on the one with the tail cone on it, and we'll discuss that more later because Ertl's shuttles uh, had accessories. And once again, uh, I believe that is some very, very old scotch tape holding those decals on. Uh, I, I should probably see if I can just source new ones at some point. But, yeah, Atlantis seen a lot of action. Discovery was the last one that I got. Um, the Ertl shuttles did not have landing gear at all. 
but it, it could be attached to accessories. This one, uh, again, has landing gear that are always out. Very solid piece of metal. This is probably the biggest one in terms of scale, although they're all right around 1 500th. And I believe this one was Z Toys, uh, was the manufacturer on it. And uh, yeah, also very well flown, the Discovery here. So, but I don't believe there's any scotch tape holding anything onto it. So, so very good, very good. Now, how can you tell which ones flew the most missions? You gotta look at the heat shields, baby. <laughs> wow. Okay, so um, the Corgi shuttle, that one would be Columbia. You see the you see the little switch there that lowers the landing gear. I, I don't think it actually even works anymore. The landing gear are permanently up on, on Columbia, and the the heat shield has seen better days. Um, and I'm aware that's a a problematic statement to make in hindsight. Please understand, I'm talking about the you know these toys I had as a kid. The the record for the most beaten up there obviously is Atlantis because almost all of the black paint has flaked off of the of that hurdle shuttle. Now you notice there that there are three holes. One underneath the cockpit, two there there are a couple of bolts holding it together. Either side of that back bolt by the engines, you notice there are two small holes, two small circular openings. Those could be mounted to either the seven forty seven or there was a there was a model of Ertl shuttle that came with booster rockets. And there were two different models of this. There was one that came with white external tank and boosters, as per the original, I think it was like the first five or six flights. But then they also, whenever they stopped painting the external tank white, Ertl made that change to the toys. Um, you could take those booster rockets off. The external tank was plastic. The booster rockets were were fairly solid diecast metal, and of course the shuttle was metal. And it there were prongs on the external tank that attached to those holes on the bottom of the Ertl shuttles. You could also get one without the tank, as you see over there on the left. Um, yeah, I've tried to accumulate specimens of you know, basically all the variations of the Ertl shuttles. They were the Ertl shuttles were particularly nice back there in the back. Uh, not quite as worn, but has still seen some action. That is my my little challenger. Uh, by the way, if you were wondering about all those that pile of mission patches underneath all these guys. Uh, those have also been with me a very, very long time. Yeah, that is me. Yes, I've always had the gut. Yes, I've always had the patches. I'm trying to remember how old I was here. Uh, maybe... 14 or 15... I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, very, very old home movie footage. Sorry about the quality there. So now about the 747, mine was lost for a long time. I got this one on eBay for seven bucks. Now you see I'm holding the Enterprise there. It's got those three holes. I was trying to line them up sight, you know, without being able to see. Not doing very well at it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Finally, uh... Finally got it clicked into place. There it is. The shuttle on the 747. Uh, the 747 also has landing gear that can lower or be raised. And I just... I, I got a new 747 actually this year, in 2024, off of eBay. Because I really thought 
the shuttle with the tail cone should have the 747 back. I was I was very pleased I didn't have to spend a huge amount of money on that. Now, it's kind of funny that the... I, I named all of my shuttles, but the Corgi shuttles here... Interestingly, same toy. You have two carded specimens here. You know, they've never been out. They've never been dented, scratched, or anything. These guys are perfect. And they're staying in there. And, and oh my gosh, they they disappeared. <laughs> Let me get that footage back. Um, now it's because I didn't have the video set to loop. Well, I'll fix your wagon. As you can see, the one on the left with the picture of the Earth, Corgi decided that was the Enterprise. The one on the right, you could barely see it at the bottom of the package. Or actually, actually no, it, uh, if you look above the word Corgi, look above the Corgi logo, it's diagonal, it says Columbia. So, yeah, I guess at some point when Columbia was actually flying and the shuttle program had started in earnest, then, you know, it was decided, oh, we should change the packaging so that it reflects a shuttle that has actually flown. So, interesting little window into how the shuttle program was marketed to the American public. And, you know, I have kept... I have kept my shuttle fleet with me all these years. Even as beat up as they are, yes, I could probably get better specimens. They wouldn't be the ones that I flew missions through my bedroom with. And so, these are some of the oldest things I have on display, and they're very dear to me. And so, that yeah, gives you a window into <laughs> what a weird kid I was, that I decided, oh, you know what, I should have a, you know, I should designate all of my toy space shuttles. You know, they should be named after specific shuttles in NASA's actual shuttle fleet. <laughs> 